The views and opinions expressed in this podcast do not necessarily reflect those of any major corporation whatsoever. Well, Bunny. Yes. Well, Bunny is actually a nickname. Uh, I'm not saying well, comma, Bunny. I'm saying well, Bunny. <laughs> well, Bunny is an ancient Norwegian tradition where in order to appease the gods of harvest time, the men in the village would round up as many baby bunnies as they could and drown them in the village well. <laughs> well. Is that story made up? Sure it is. But you know what? It feels true. And in Trump's America, what feels true is true now. Yes. This Isn't is that true. amazing? Like this feels true, so it's true now. Well, buddy. Well, buddy, this week on the Pope on film, we are K I S. Okay. Keeping it. No freaking Adam Sandler monstrosity this week. Okay. No hard to watch big boobed thief spy movie. No Vinnie Jones feeding feeding ancient lizard people. No boring ass black and white classic that's secretly <laughs> crap. No seventies made for TV version of a Marvel superhero that only stoners cared about. None of that crap for this episode. Hell no! This week we are KIS keeping it freaking simple in a rubber monster <laughs> suit running around killing people. Simple, serene, stupid as hell, and we need this right now. We need <laughs> to keep it simple. Have you seen the goddamn news lately? Washington, D.C. is on fire right now. <laughs> Idiot, idiotic illegal scandals and fuck ups are become our daily now. I remember when it's like, oh man, this week Donald Trump doing something crazy, and now it's like Donald Trump this hour. Mm -hmm. You know, it's coming daily now. We used to be like, oh, maybe once a week he'll go insane, but now it's coming like every day there's something different. Yeah. <laughs> There's some new thing that is making the Constitution cry. This just in, breaking news, a memo out today via the New York Times states that President Trump has allegedly sold Florida to Vladimir Putin. <laughs> Every day. It's and then you'll get into arguments with people on like, Then you'll get into arguments with people on Facebook saying, well, he had a right to sell Florida. It's like, what the fuck is your problem already? <sighs> yeah, like like Trump got classified information and told it to the Russians, and now we have a parade of Republicans who got angry at Hillary Clinton for her handling of classified information now saying, it's okay, it's just classified information. We've never cared about the way people handle classified information. I mean, you've never seen us say anything bad about anybody else handling classified information. It's not really a big deal. Okay. It's not really a big deal. You yeah. know why you're talking about this. Yeah. It's not a big deal. No, and let's not look at the week, okay? He fires James Comey for investigating his ties to Russia. Then yeah. meets with the Russian ambassador and their top spy... Okay, yeah. will not allow our media into the Oval Oval Office to cover this. Allows the Russian media in to cover this, and gives them classified information. And we're supposed yeah. to be cool with that. My favorite, my favorite part of the week is when uh, President Trump fired FBI Director James Comey, and then there was like a day or two where Sean Spicer and like. Uh, like, oh my uh, God. Uh, uh, Kellyanne Conway and people are saying, hey, the firing of James Comey had nothing to do with the Russia investigation. Nothing. And then Trump goes on the news and he's like, and they're like, President Trump, why did you fire James Comey? Because of the Russia investigation. Yeah. That's the reason why. Yeah. I fired him because I hate because he said I wasn't under investigation and I am. Did you know about this Russia investigation? I had no clue, so I fired him. Anyone who says <laughs> different is lying to you. Meanwhile, Kellyanne Conway is like, bitch, why did you even, like, why did you make me go in the news and say this if you, if you were literally going to contradict the thing you told me to say? Mm hmm. 
every day it's just some new disgusting scandal. Breaking news out of the White House today. President Trump allegedly threatened to shave James Comey's balls in his sleep if he ever Googled Russia. I have, and I've got to say, though, okay, I've got to say, even with as atheist as I am, I, I've, I've started praying for Sean Spicer's job. Not that I want his job. I want him to keep his job. And I'm praying yep. very hard because he's going to blow any fucking second. He is going to blow, and it's going to be beautiful. Yeah. It's going to be yeah. beautiful. Yeah. He's going to – he's because that's, that's what we're waiting for right now, okay? Right now, politically, what we're waiting for is we're waiting for, for the, Repu the Republicans to start breaking ranks. Yeah. Okay, and there are yeah. a couple of and them. None of them would appear, would appear on the news yesterday. Yeah. None of them. So yeah. we're waiting for which one, and I'm bet it's going to be Sean Spicer right in the middle of a press conference. Yeah. Every okay. day there's you just know what? I'll night. answer that question. I would love to answer that question. I've been waiting to answer yeah. that question because he's a fucking lunatic. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's definitely got he's definitely got a Melissa McCarthy inside of him that at any second he's just gonna snap. Yes, he he's gonna he's gonna have purple pants and get all green at any second. <laughs> he's gonna Hulk up. <laughs> yeah, every day there's a new reason to be nervous and paranoid and ashamed to be an American. Ashamed to be an American. Lee Greenwood needs to get on that shit right now. Mm-hmm be a great parody yeah i was proud to be an american until his orange ass became president you know <laughs> something like that but that was just like the first thing on the top of my head and i proudly stand up and sit back down again because fuck this fucking land you know <laughs> these are fucking times buntendo 64 we are on the verge of world war three and the only person who can stop uh, America's nuclear annihilation is an illiterate rapist who wants to fuck his own daughter and can't stop lying. Just shut your mouth. Yeah. It's tweeting. Stop fucking tweeting. You're just burying yourself at this point. You're just burying <laughs> yourself. So being a U.S. citizen fucking sucks right now. We're the laughing stock of the world and everything is horrible. So, well, again. For an hour he has uh, yeah. un unless something's happened since i since we started the podcast he has not yet even tweeted which makes me think rikishi got another job rikishi is literally yeah. sitting on donald trump preventing him yeah. from tweeting yeah that's a good possibility. He is having a career resurgence right now. Thanks to she. I don't Thanks. even want to say his name. Yeah, <laughs> Adam Lambert. Yeah. So for like an hour, let's just take a deep breath. Let's forget the news and the <sighs> destruction of democracy, and let's just crack wise on a crappy monster movie. And this week, it is the easily forgettable 1971 crap fest Aquaman. Aquaman. And I say that it's easily because you can't remember a movie that you, you never got to see in the first place. Not not because this film wasn't in theaters, but because apparently um, it, the film is a good movie for having zero dollars in the lighting budget. Yes, yes, zero like budget. Manos was... Manos, the hands of fate was lit better than Octoman. Yes, and if they could have gotten the guy like into the, the lighting from Manos, Octoman would have been a much better movie. Yes. Yeah, like 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 Octoman is like we need to make this film very cheap, and so here's what we're gonna do: we're not gonna light a goddamn thing, and we're gonna film all of it in the dark. But Octoman is is definitely in the Manos wheelhouse. What do we? Those are honey badgers, and apparently they don't care. Maxwell's next to me reading an animal book. I'm going to try and teach him about animals. Yes, Maxwell? What is that? That is a cat, and someone stapled wings 
and feathers onto it, and now it, the cat is flying in there. No. It's called a flying cat bird. Oh, it's a bird. <laughs> That's birds, I know. Oh, it's an eagle. It's an eagle. eagle? Yeah. yeah, they're all bald. Eagle. Yeah. Did you say a black eagle? Yeah. No, no, Maxwell. Be nice. They're called African American eagles. Yeah. Okay. A mouse. Black is not the preferred nomenclature. A, a mouse and a yes. Asian American, please. And what is this? But sure, this movie is crap, but it's like a comfortable crap. Like I feel that if 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 we were doing this episode when Obama is president, then I'd be like, oh man, this movie is horrible. But yeah. life is so horrible. Yeah. Right now. With uh, our current president just burning America to the ground, that it's like I watch this crappy movie and I go, okay, no, this is comfy. I like this. It's like a warm blanket, you know. It's it like, it oh. gave me it gave me a feeling that that I have not had in a in a in a little bit of a time where I was like, I I could have made this. I could have made this, and it probably would have been better. Yeah. yeah. It's just some people in the woods. Yeah. <laughs> so in, in an effort to escape the dreadful stress of day-to-day -day life in America, I set up an old-school playlist. An old-school drive-in playlist, which is an always always a good way to chase away the blahs. Yes. And I won't comment on every single solitary goddamn bit of the playlist like I normally do. Do, but I do want to mention a few little things yeah. that were on the playlist. Number one. Jeannie just I, came in and it looks rough out. It, it snowed today here, dude. Really? Yeah. Really? Well, um, uh, we have a, an extreme flood watch from 7 o'clock tonight to Saturday morning. Really? So... Yeah, so my drive to work tomorrow is going to be a lot of fun. Really about that. So, so a, a couple of things I wanted to mention about the playlist for Octoman. Number one, the there's a preview in that playlist which is just goddamn adorable and cute as hell. So I went and looked for it, and sure enough, on YouTube is a high quality version. William Castle's kooky comedy zots. Yes. So just put that in the back pocket. William Castle's Zots is, is, is high quality on YouTube, so it's out there. So I'm okay. really excited about that. I, I have yeah. heard of this movie. I think that's probably the only time I've ever seen a preview for it. No, Maxwell, we're not watching Hobby Kids. We are not watching Hobby Kids right now. We're not watching anything. I'm trying to record the podcast. Um, number two, there is a preview here. There is a preview in this, which is related to the Avengers. I made a connection, and I am damn proud that I made this connection. Okay. okay. Uh, so go for it. So there's a bunch of pre. There's a bunch of previews in the in the in the freaking. Uh, playlist and one of the previews is for a forgotten black exploitation film called Trouble Man and okay. there are some lines in the film lines, there's a there are some lines in the trailer which were literally stolen for the trailer for Black, black Dynamite <laughs> <clears throat> like, oh, like see the original preview for Black Dynamite there is the line Black Dynamite wears six hundred dollar suits and drives a ten thousand dollar car. <laughs> and it's like, oh, it must have been impressive in the seventies. But just to let you know that in our modern day, that just means you're an assistant manager at Kinko's. Yes. It doesn't mean anything other than that. <laughs> so I was watching the preview, and it's like he has two guns. One to stop trouble and one to cause trouble. And I, I'm yes. watching the film. I'm like, I've never heard of Trouble Man. I've never seen Trouble Man. No. Man, I've never seen Trouble Man available anywhere ever. But I and I've seen a lot of black exploitation. I've seen all the shafts, and I've seen you know uh, uh, what is it a uh, Superfly, and I've seen 
uh, where is Bucky and what has he had? And yeah. I've seen a lot of black exploitation, so I'm wondering, I, how come I've never seen Trouble Man anywhere? I guess I've never heard of Trouble Man anymore. And that's when it hit me. The Avengers, specifically the second Captain America movie. Because if you see that preview again, it's a forgettable black exploitation film yeah. with the greatest soundtrack in the world. The goddamn beginning of Captain America, the Winter Soldier, when uh, Falcon and Captain America meet, and Falcon is like, oh, so you missed out on the last 70 years, whatever. And so he gives him something for him to uh, listen to, and Captain America says that classic line, I'll put it in the list. I'll put it in the book. And he has a book of all these things that people tell him he needs to check out. Uh-huh. Star Trek slash wars and stuff like that. Yeah. What what Anthony, what the Falcon specifically says is 1975 Trouble Man soundtrack. Oh. Marvin Gaye. It's all the things, all the music from the 70s in one album. And Captain America says... I'll put it on the list. And then at the end of the film, Captain America is like totally knocked out. And when he wakes up in the hospital, Anthony Mackie's right next to him listening to the Trouble Man soundtrack. <laughs> and I'm so happy I made this connection. I'm like, holy shit, that's Trouble Man. Okay, the soundtrack Captain America listened to in the hospital. Oh, goddamn, there's a fucking... Uh, cinematic universe connection to one of the shitty films on my playlist. I got so excited when I realized that. That is a good, That's... good pull. Yeah. I was really proud of that. That's the Trouble Man soundtrack. Ten four. I feel a lot of that, a, a bit more of that soundtrack now, thanks to freaking Captain America, the Winter Soldier. I'm going to have to track down the Trouble Man soundtrack now. Yes. Really proud of that. Uh, the United Artists opening is really iconic for me. Apparently, I went to a lot of United Artists theaters as a kid. Yes. The opening of just the food and tro- proper receptacles and all that. No smoking. And it's so weird it now. It was nostalgic to going see. Going to a theater and it's... It's weird now going to a theater and it's like, uh, uh, please turn off your cell phones. In the case of, of the shooting what you do here are the exits and i'm like god damn remember when it was just smoking yeah smoking and throwing away trash they're telling us what to do in case of an active shooter situation and 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 i remember back to smoking to smoking in designated sections yeah yeah so there's a betty boop cartoon in the mix yes I've got a big problem with Betty Boop as a character because she's popular. She's still popular. She sells a lot of merchandise. You see a lot of women with Betty Boop. Uh, cases and Betty Boop shirts and Betty Boop with a Betty Boop sticker on it. There's no goddamn way that that woman has seen a 1930s Max Fleischer Betty Boop cartoon. You know. <laughs> So it's okay. odd. Slow, like just slow down. Fan. Just pause a second. I hate to do this, but just pause a second because you're breaking up a lot. Yeah, I, I, suddenly I've got a bad quality and I have no idea why. Yeah. Like, why is my connection bad? Like, okay. okay. Now I think my connection is good. Okay. Okay. See? Am I sounding better now? Yes, okay. you are. You're sounding better to me. Okay. So Betty Boop has a huge fandom, but it's weird because all of the people who are Betty Boop fans just like seeing Betty Boop on merchandise. They don't know Betty Boop. They don't know yeah. the history of Betty Boop. Mm. They don't know who Max Fleischer is. They don't know Bimbo. They don't know, like, the freaking clown who hangs out with Betty Boop. They don't know Betty Boop's story. Yeah. Betty Boop has done anything new since who framed roger rabbit so it's really weird that you still see betty boop stuff out there you know especially when most of betty boop is comprised of somebody chasing her around for implied sexual purposes yeah yeah so she has a fake fandom and it's really weird but you can always count on max max fleischer to be crazy ass yeah 
the 1930s was a good time for crazy ass animation and this cartoon is 1933 and features my homeboy bimbo yes hey maxwell hey, Max- hey maxwell i got a question for you it's an important question it's probably the most important question i've ever asked you okay so so are you ready are you ready okay want to be, be a member no okay i'm gonna torture you now so originally, Bimbo was the star of the cartoons. He's a dog. And then Betty Boop was his girlfriend, who was also a dog. There are some cartoons of Betty Boop with dog ears, and it's really weird. Yes. Then Betty Boop became so popular that she became human, and then she became the star of the cartoons, and that eventually killed Bimbo off because a human can't be banging a dog in the goddamn kid's cartoon. Yes. Yeah. But but this is all pre-code. This is a pre-code cartoon. So this one actually features Betty Boop as a baby taking a bath naked. Yes. There's a naked Betty Boop in this cartoon, and it's creepy as hell. <laughs> um, this playlist also has a big intermission, which is good because the movie's really crap. Um, I, I put a lot of drive-in stuff in there. Let me talk about drive-ins. Let me talk yes. about drive Okay, let me talk about drive-ins. There are two drive-ins within driving distance from me right now in Oklahoma. Yeah. There is the chief drive-in in Chickasha, and there is the Winchester drive-in in Oklahoma City. The mm-hmm. chief drive-in is the better drive-in because, number one, the it is a small putt putt golf course right in front of the screen. Yeah. Between it's between the screen and where the cars park. So you get there like an hour and a half early. You do a round or two of mini golf, and then you see the movie. It's really adorable, yeah. and they have outside chairs so you can sit in a theater but it's outside it's just like in the movie the outsiders and it's really old and adorable and i love the chief drive-in and also a big plus they are open year round the only difficult part is um it's it's about two it's about an hour and a half to get there if you want to pay tolls but if you don't want to pay tolls it takes me about three and a half hours to get there and we're talking about movies that don't start until 7 or 8 p.m so if we go to the chief drive-in we won't be getting home until like three or four in the morning and i'm not a spring chicken anymore i can't do that Mm -hmm. so the chief drive-in is the better drive-in but we can never really go there unless it's like the world's most specialist occasion the winchester drive-in is also a pretty good drive-in and if it's it's less than an hour away it's only so it's close but it's only open from like april to august yes so yeah so that that just kind of sucks and i hate that but it opened three weeks ago and i said i'm so excited the winchester drive-in it's close and it just opened up so when there's a good double feature, I'll take the kids and we'll definitely go to the drive-in. So they opened up three weeks ago and they had a double feature, The Fast and the uh, the Fate of the Furious and The Boss Baby. And I go, okay, that's oh. really shit. I'm not going to go to that. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I've never seen a Fast and the Furious movie and I'm not going to start now. Yeah. And The Boss Baby, um, we may or may not already have a copy of that. But anyway... Um, I'm uh, not going to go see that double feature. That double feature is crap. We'll see what's playing next week. So next week came along. That was last weekend. And they announced the double feature for, for the Winchester Drive-In, The Boss Baby, and The Fate of the Furious. Oh. I'm like, damn it. Damn it. Like, no, it's the same. But you just switched. So like, oh, god damn it. Okay, yeah. fine. But I'm sh- I'm sure for the third weekend, you can have the same thing. Next weekend, there'll be something good. Guardians of the freaking Galaxy 2 just came out. There's, it's going to be a good double feature. And I'm thinking probably Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 and The Boss Baby, and that's a pretty good double feature. We can definitely go and see that. Or maybe something else. I don't know. But let's see what they're happening next week. And yesterday, they announced what they're playing this Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Okay. Boss Baby and 
of the Furious. <sighs> For the third Smash week in a row. And it's like, oh, God damn it. Oh. So I'm, I'm ready to when they're showing something good and they're showing crap. I swear to God they're doing this just so that I won't go to the drive-in. Yes. Well, we, we totally so had to... We totally had a breakdown of see Guardians of the Galaxy, dude. Yeah. It's, it's fun. Wonderful. I, I, I love that freaking movie, the opening with a uh, group dancing while while the rest of the team is fighting the alien. It reminded they, uh, me, uh, the God, best part I love that. was when, when Rocket had to come and get the bug out of his mouth. <laughs> oh my God. Do you know how many times I do that a day? Holy oh. flip. Yeah. That was adorable. But it also, like, like when I watched, the, when I watched sure. Buffy the Vampire Slayer through the first time, mm-hmm. I love that show, and it reminded me of that opening Guardians of the Galaxy sequence reminded me of an episode that they had called The Zeppo. And in that episode, Xander, who had no special powers or anything like that, he was just kicking back with a couple of, like, like frat boy zombies. You know, a, a silly little story. And the main cast keep, kept popping in with this horrific, apocalyptic thing that they were doing that we weren't watching. <laughs> and that's what this opening yeah. sequence was. There's this huge battle going on. We can kind of sort of see it, but we're watching Baby Groot instead. Yeah. <laughs> Max will carefully put these back, okay? And throw away the, the paper that you just cut. The, this, yeah, that, that part. Throw that away. Put the... It carefully put those scissors back, okay? Carefully. No running with them. If you run with scissors, you'll explode. Not too many people know that. I want there were them. parts of that Guardians of the Galaxy movie. There were parts of that movie that hit close to home, like the scene where uh, uh, Baby Groot wants to be held by Drax, and so Drax picks him up, and then uh, Baby Groot immediately falls asleep on his chest. I like I I, I broke down at that scene because that's basically just that's basically just Eleanor and I, you know. Yeah. Like oh, like my every other night with Eleanor. Yeah. Like I like my heart broke when. I was in. Yeah. But I added to the playlist. This is the last thing I'm going to mention about the playlist. A wonderful old Disney cartoon from 1946 that is called The Story of Menstruation. Yes. And I feel I've been educated. Yeah. The cartoon is a Disney cartoon, but it was commissioned by the company that makes Kleenex, Huggies, and Kotex tampons. Talk Mm -hmm. about... uh, issues there <laughs> in the 1940s and 50s this car was literally shown to millions of girls at school across america <laughs> that is that's... huh what you say nice nice i am upset that this is a disney film teaches kids the story of menstruation but hey you're disney you have a lot of characters why can't Cinderella teach us about yeah. menstruation? It's like, hi, I'm 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 Daisy, and mm-hmm. I, I'm Minnie. We're gonna teach you about bleeding from your vajayj today. Mm-hmm. You know, you've already got these popular characters. Why don't you use them? When Snow White isn't Snow White. Exactly. That would have worked. That would have worked. And then the whole playlist ends with Jackie Chan credits. In a, in a perfect world, all credits would be Jackie Chan credits. Yes. So I did some stats for this film, and I came across something which is interesting. This is a 1971, uh, Octoman is a 1971 film that was written and directed by a guy named Harry Essex. Now, the film Octoman is primarily known for having shitty monster designs by Inno eventual Oscar award-winning creature 
Rick Baker. Rick Baker. How this heartbreaking Rick... is that? This is like his first attempt. Give the guy like like some credit. But if you know the name Harry Essex, then you know why this film was made. Harry Essex was a playwright in nineteen. 19- 41, he he ended up, because he knew the story for Universal's film, Man Made Me Monster with Lon Chaney Jr. Oh. And he thought, like, oh, man, I came up with a story for a Universal monster film. This is going to be my big break. Then World War II happened, and he went to war. When oh. he came back, he, he didn't know what to do, and then he heard from a person who heard from a person that, hey, Columbia Pictures is looking for playwrights to, to just – be hired hands at the studio and just crank out screenplays. So that started his new career, and he wrote a buttload of movies and a buttload of episodes of TV show. Have TV you show. ever seen those? He wrote vo- episodes of. See now, would it, now that sounds all glamorous, but have you ever seen yeah. those fucking writing rooms? Oh, hell yeah. In a closet with termites. Oh no, they had yeah, like no. they had huge rooms of writers all at basically like a school desk with a typewriter on it. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's like no, just enough room for your paper. Doing. You know, it was a it, yeah. writers in a sweatshop. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, like uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall. Like, we don't need no education. Like, all the kids just lined up and shit. Yeah, I, 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 just, so wanted to, up... I just wanted to stop there for a second because it sounds like, oh, well, he got, a, he got a job as a screenwriter. Like, it's a big, glamorous thing. No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. So he wrote a lot of movies and TV shows, including the episodes of Dragnet. He wrote the film It Came From Outer Space. Uh-huh. And he was... He was one of the primary writers of the legendary film, The Creature from the Black Lagoon. Nice. Now, now the Octoman should be slowly coming into focus here. So in the late 60s, early 70s, the guy who helped create The Creature from the Black Lagoon, he says he has a new movie idea that's in the same vein, but better, scarier, more modern. Well, someone pretty much has to throw money at that idea. Yes. And that's all that this film is. It's a cheap 70s retread of Creature from the Black Lagoon that was created by one of the guys who created Creature from the Black Lagoon. And I love Creature from the Black Lagoon. <laughs> but you know what would make Creature from the Black Lagoon even better? If it was done in the 70s for one-eighth of the budget by people with no talent and Oscar winner Rick Baker. Yes. Wouldn't that make Creature from the Black Lagoon better? And also, you know what I hate about Creature from the Black Lagoon? The fact that you can see the actors. That's another thing that I hate about Creature from the Black Lagoon, is how you can see everything. We need to make it more dark and mysterious. Yes. <laughs> so basically, that's the creation of Octoman. Octoman is basically just a sloppy rewrite of Creature from the Black Lagoon by one of the guys trying to cash in on his fame, having created a few... Universal monster movies. Uh The interesting part about this film, you can't tell if you watch the movie, but if you see the credits, the part of Dr. John Willard, he's the guy who's part of the the institution that cuts everyone's budget, so they have to go and find more money. That (laughs) is way, 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 way past his prime actor, Jeff Morrow, who was in our first episode, Giant Claw Bitches! (laughs) <laughs> giant claw hey nice i'm a tie. walking to a harassment machine hey woman i'm gonna make out with you now and there's nothing i can you can do about it because i'm the star of this film and it's the 50s <laughs> yeah. yeah so he has a cameo in octoman it's pretty uh it's pretty it's pretty good so, are you okay, Maxwell? You're just all over me. You're like a cat at this point. You're just, you You are literally on me. Are you okay? I'm hungry and I, and I just want to cuddle you. Okay, you want to cuddle me, that's fine. Um, 
we we have a bit to talk about the plot, and we uh, got about fifty minutes to do it before freaking supernatural starts. So maybe we should take a break. Should we take a break? Yeah. We should take a break. I did you, Maxwell. <laughs> I'm asking <laughs> Bunford and Sons over here, okay? Not you. So don't 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 take his line, okay? No. Bunny, should we take a break? We yeah. should take a break. We should take a break. We will be right back with more of the Pope on Flim after these commercial messages. <gasps> Okay. Wow, Max is getting good at that. Yeah, and then you just got into just speaking in tongues, but that's okay. Bob's not a fan of commerce, but the internet has enabled the small business owner to increase his cash flow more than in the in the past 25 years than in the entire recorded history. Because Mad Men. See, 10 tons of animal fury leap from the screen. Hey, look! Giant Ape defied Jaw Shark. See Giant Ape Vanquish Monster Reptile. See Ocean Liner demolished. See Metropolis fight to survive Flaming Holocaust. See helpless beauty in embrace of 36-foot monster. C8 in 3D. And we're back with more of the. No, Max, well, it's not the fart on film. It's the Pope on film. I take what you said. I, I, you, you're going to make me cry. So let's talk about the plot or lack there of, of this week's film, Octoman. The film starts with the title, and that's never a good sign. Well, I, I think I can kind of sum up the plot pretty quick and easy. Okay. There's a bunch of people. And there's an Octoman. Yeah, no, that's basically it. I, I've watched this film a bajillion times, and in doing so, I figured out a small semblance of plot, at least more so than I think most people. It, it, it's impossible to try and discern what the hell's going on when you can only see about 40% of the film. Yes. But I, I'm pretty sure I've got it down. So, um... The film starts with the title, and that's never a good sign. Also, the Octoman gets his own credit in the beginning, and I find that to be a little bit odd. But, hey, do you know who played Octoman? Do you know who was in the Octoman suit? I would really like to know who was in the Octoman suit. Because how did... There were some parts here where he chewed up scenery. How do you chew up scenery when you're Octoman? <laughs> yeah, um... It was Jimmy Carter. It was Jimmy Carter? Jimmy Carter. That's absolutely 100% true. Jimmy Carter was in that zip. So the film opens in Mexico, and you can tell because seconds into the film, a brown man in a straw hat says, See? Yes. <laughs> That's how you can tell that it's in Mexico. Anyway, full disclosure, I've seen the films a few times, but the last time I tried to see it for the podcast was so boring. I, 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 what was that? 
I, I had to yell at the cat. Oh, okay. Stop, Maxwell. It, it, so, full disclosure, the last time I watched this film was so boring that I also was watching Voluptuous Women on Chatterbait.com. I just want to be honest here. <laughs> the website, because it's free, uh, but it, it, also, it also pairs well with this week's movie, because the movie's just so bad that, yes. you know... And cam girls suddenly becomes uh, much more exciting. <laughs> so there's a group of scientists and a requisite attractive woman. And there's all these scientists like, oh, we're studying science things in a science way. Yes, and I'm the woman who has to be in all of these movies. <laughs> It's like, you're right. In all of these science-y films, there always has to be a woman. Yes, I'm the requisite attractive woman. I'm sure I won't get into any trouble. JK, I know I'll be kidnapped at least and once I in this do, film. And I do science stuff. Yeah. So the, some scientists and the requisite attractive woman, they're in Mexico, and they're there to study radiation levels in the water, which makes sense because everyone remembers the 1969 nuclear test that happened off the coast of Mexico City. Yes. Which is amazing because it's a landlocked city. But anyway, <laughs> they get a water sample. Anyway, they get a water sample, and they also get a rubber octopus toy that whines like a dog and has the power to badly sink sound. Yes. So this totally real and not at all fake octopus is taken to where it was originally found, because some guy just brought it in a bucket. So they took it to where it was originally found, and boom! Four minutes in, and you get a glimpse of the monster. Oh! This is in this and the Korean movie The Host are the only films that are just like, you know what? Okay, here's what the monster looks like. Yeah. Right in the beginning. I'm so used to Godzilla movies where you see human drama you don't care about for an hour until you get to see Godzilla that it's weird to see this film and I'm like, oh shit, we're four minutes in and that's Octoman. All right then. <laughs> One of those. And again, apparently to save money on the film, they don't light it for shit, so it's difficult to see anything. Yeah. So back at camp, back at camp, they've apparently collected another octopus and they're fucking with it. And it's important to note that when they study the octopus, they find that the octopus, um, these baby octopi have like half octopus DNA and half human DNA. Yeah. So they've got these octopus babies in a bucket and they're just fucking with it. Some guy is just like, I'm a nameless character and I'm poking this octopus. But the and only, boom, the only octopus. way for that to even possibly happen, okay, since it's not possible to happen, but someone in landlocked Mexican city, Mexico City, would have yeah. to have been fucking an octopus at the time of the nuclear yes. blast. Yeah. Which happens. Which happens. I hey, want to see hey, that what, movie. What, just FYI, what you said would be a good uh, would be a good thing for our dueling lists of ten things Richard Simmons might be up to right now. Yes. He's in Mexico City, and he's having sex with octopuses during nuclear blasts. That would not be surprising, because it's no. Richard Simmons. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever Richard Simmons is right now, I'm pretty sure he's with Kurt Henning, the, the, the magician, the crazy magician from the 70s. It's magic, boy. And girls, that guy. Yes, yes, yes. David, so Doug, a, Doug Henning, yeah. Is, Doug Henning, yeah. Kurt Henning is, is, is Mr. Perfect, the wrestler. I knew it was a Henning. <laughs> yes. Somewhere, uh, Doug Henning and Richard Simmons are spooning. That's all I know. That's all I know. So, uh, Octoman shows up to mess with the person who's messing with the Octa baby, and apparently. Octoman does something bad. I'm not exactly sure what, because it's a poorly shot scene in pretty much complete and total darkness. And so maybe someone died? I don't know. 
bit unclear. It's like the filmmaker says, okay, this scene is done at night, and so we need to go outside in the darkness and film this scene. We can't have any lights. This film happens at night, so there can't be any lights at all. Yeah. And some... Okay, that's not how film works. You have to see what's going on. No, this happens in at night, so it has to be completely dark. You can't be able to see anything. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not how it freaking works. But, you know, whatever. You made Creature from the Black Lagoon. So... The octopi have some human DNA, and this is a big find. So they go to the head scientist guy at some yeah. institute to show his findings to the guy from the giant claw. But the giant claw's like, hey, yeah, no, this is a good finding, I guess. But hey, we're cutting your funding. So you're screwed. So meanwhile, back at the ranch... Um, they're trying to figure out a way to have money so they can continue with their experiments and try and find this Octoman person. And they find this guy, Johnny, and Johnny is a rich guy that's pretty much been in every King Kong movie in existence. <laughs> Except for the last one. The last movie, Kong Skull Island, impressed me because it's like I went into the movie and I'm like, okay, I have seen every King Kong movie. I've seen every King Kong movie. Yeah. I saw King Kong lives in the theater, goddammit. <laughs> I have seen AP, a.k.a. Attack of the Giant Horny Gorilla. I know what to expect. So I went to the film, and I was impressed because it's a King Kong movie, and yet, like, 50% of the cast lives. Yes. And I'm like, holy shit, I expect just be Loki and Envy Adams from Scott Pilgrim. This movie has already surprised me. <laughs> but he only like got expect- the part, okay? Because when when the producer was looking over his resume, it said knows how to chaotically run away. Yeah. Yeah. That's pretty much it. Yeah. That is pretty much it. Yeah. But anyway, that Kong Skull Island movie is really good. It's a surprising film. It's it, it's it's better than I thought it was going to be. It's really really good. And one of the guys from uh, one of the guys from uh, other spaces in it. So that really made me yeah. happy. So um, so Johnny is a rich guy, and he will fund all the sciencey crap as long as he gets to keep any freak aqua octa man that they find. He's going to tour America with it. It's going to make me millions. And there's your plot, boys and girls. <laughs> so, I'm going to Winnebago to go Octoman hunting. And I would just like to... This movie is shit, so I'd like to talk about the beer I just opened. Okay. Um, so, I'm a big fan of Tecate which is a Mexican beer that if you're not Mexican, you should never drink ever. Okay. Because it tastes like battery acid, and it is a hideous, hideous beer. And the only reason I drink it is because my dad drank it, his grandfather drank it, every freaking family event known to man, there was always a cooler of the goddamn thing, and everybody drank it, and so... It was one of the first beers that I ever drank, and I just got used to it. I built a tolerance to it. Yes. A tolerance to Tecate. So when I saw that there was a blue Tecate out there called Tecate Light, I said, okay, I'm not going to try this. I just now got used to regular Tecate, which tastes like crap. So it's going to be a while until I try Tecate Light. But it, but one day I just got bored and I bought it. And oh my God, it tastes like a normal beer that regular humans would drink. <laughs> tecate, which, is, which has taste and flavor. Like, I, I was so used to Tecate face, which is that hideous, sour face you make whenever you drink a Tecate, that yeah. I drink this Tecate Light. Oh my god, I don't have Tecate face anymore. <laughs> oh my god, this tastes normal. I think this is a Mexican beer that whites can try. <laughs> Hooray! That should be the commercial. Anyway, it's really good. Yeah. I, I, think, you, really I think you should develop oh that, god. just that, for like a 30 second spot. Yeah, yeah. Tecate Light. It's a Tecate for whites. 
yeah. yeah. That's good. So the 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 mystery Winnebago goes back to the original campsite where the octopus poker was, and they find the body of the pokeable guy. Oh no! So so they 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 go they want to go hunting for Octoman. They're eventually visited by a villager with an insanely offensive accent, whose grandfather was killed in a flashback by Octoman. <laughs> so they hop in their so they hop in their mystery Winnebago to visit the village. Oh wait, did I say village? I'm sorry. They go to the village. <laughs> we need to go to the village. The village where my grandfather was killed. We need to go to the village. That's how all Mexicans talk. We don't talk like that. Yeah, that's because we're Americans, Maxwell. Don't let anybody. Don't let anybody try to say otherwise. We are American. You want to? We're born in America. Regardless of the color of our skin, we're freaking patriotic Americans. This one time I this one time I was I was at the store and, and it, I was in a long line and some woman here in Oklahoma was like, "Excuse me, I hope you don't mind, but, but what nationality are you?" And I said what I always say, "I'm an American, ma'am." Uh huh. No, no, no. What race are you? It's like, well, I was born in America. It's like, no, but what nationality are you? And it's like, okay, you have to realize now that you're like shaming me to announce my race to you, white woman. <laughs> you got sounds on on your on your end of this deal i'm a freaking goddamn american and unless i'm watching the three caballeros yes so they go to the village and they're followed the whole way by octoman who has suddenly become very stalkerish but uh so octoman is following him and because this was written by the guy who wrote the creature from the black lagoon you just know octoman's eventually gonna fall in love with the requisite woman yes you just know that it's gonna happen maxwell is a uh, jumping on the bed. Maxwell, when Emerald was your age, she was jumping on Deanna's bed in California. This is a true story. She was jumping on the bed, and Mommy came in and said, Emerald and Deanna, don't jump on this bed. And so she left, and they kept jumping on the bed, and Mommy came in and said, don't jump on this bed. You're going to hurt yourself. And then she left, and they kept jumping on the bed, and Emerald fell on the floor and broke her arm and had to be in the cast for like three weeks. So yeah, she broke her arm and she was crying and crying. They had to rush her to the hospital. She had a cast on her arm and everyone said, oh, how did she break her arm? And we all pointed at her in shame and said, she was jumping on the bed and she was told not to. She, she, she this is her fault. Don't, don't see her cast and her beautiful blue eyes and think, oh, poor thing. No, this was her. <laughs> she did this to herself. <laughs> so watch out around on your very small bed, Maxwell. You could break your arm. And you're not going to miss school for it because it's summer. Oh my God, I don't have to wake up at 5.55 in the morning anymore. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh, these next three months are going to be wonderful. I'm actually going to get some sleep. So at night, there's another nighttime attack in the freaking dark, and I guess someone is killed. I don't know. This movie is darker than Charlie Murphy! <laughs> <laughs> Charlie Murphy, the darkness is spreading, the darkness! And you just know that all the dark scenes are to cover the cheapness of the freaking monster suit. But yeah. yeah. Maybe when, when someone knocks on a door at night, I, I open the door and it's a zombie at night. Kill it. You just took this podcast to a really weird area. Yeah. <laughs> Max, zombies aren't real. Zombies don't exist. Zombies were created by a guy named George Romero who created the idea of zombies just to sell a cheap movie to the public. He created the modern zombie. But George Romero didn't copyright his own movie, so he's an idiot. <laughs> and lost millions millions of dollars because he didn't copyright his own freaking movie Daddy? so the minute he released the movie it was everyone's movie we own this movie we own a part of this movie it's ridiculous Daddy. so zombies don't exist if zombies did exist then they would pretty much either be falling apart or immediately attacked by dogs Daddy. yes maxwell with a lot of 
when I go on a, a few trips, I saw a lot on the bus. I saw a lot of dead people. Yeah, it's called cemeteries, and there's a million of them in Oklahoma because there's more old people than there are young people. There's a lot of cemeteries. <laughs> it's not a big deal. When I pass a cemetery called Brown Cemetery, and I'm assuming that if I die in this state, that's where they're going to bury me. Yeah. Oh, my dad So I'm not going to die for a really long time. My grandfather died when he was 98 years old, so I'm going to be suffering for, like, the last 15 <laughs> years of my life, but it's going to be worth it. So... A guy, they go back to the original campsite, and the poker is dead, but apparently the rest of the people DGAF because it's immediately back to Octoman hunting. Yeah. And that's when things get dark again, and dark for like 10 to 15 minutes. You can't see a goddamn thing. All you hear is bongo music, so apparently, apparently Octoman is like a hippie in the... 50s. Apparently he's he's a beatnik. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Attacked some people, and so um, the head scientist and the <laughs> this is so the head scientist and the requisite woman are outside the RV talking in the dark, which is so stupid. Multiple dead people have been attacked by Octoman. Maybe you shouldn't be outside in the pitch darkness having your little monologue, but whatever. <laughs> like minutes attacked by Octoman, and you're like, oh, Octoman just killed our partner. Maybe we should uh, sit on lawn chairs in the dark and think about it outside. That's a great idea. <laughs> so, of course, Octoman attacks them, and they try and fight it off with horn honking, and apparently horn honking scares the hell out of Octoman, because yeah. Octoman takes off or waddles off. <laughs> and they're like, oh, unless so we Unless to, we you to... saw... <laughs> Octoman from a distance, okay? Whenever you got a shot, a full-body shot of Octo Oct Octoman, he would strike a horrific action pose. This is the one thing oh, that yeah. this movie yeah, did no, right. He's, like, trying to come up with yeah. a classic monster pose. You know, like the wolf man yeah. peeking like, out from behind a tree. Yeah. And he's and, always got, like, the paws out. And, yeah. Yeah. And the costume is so freaking ridiculous. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's. Yeah. That is the one redeeming feature that this movie has. Those scenes. Those scenes were genius. Yeah. So they're like, okay, we need to capture this Octoman. We need to capture it alive. I repeat, capture it alive. There's going to be no randomly shooting at this monster in this film. We need to capture this the uh, find of the century alive. So I repeat, no randomly shooting at this monster throughout the entire film. We're capturing it alive. How should we capture this animal who's already killed a bunch of people I know? Let's go on a small ass boat. <laughs> on a small, looks like a tiny raft. And let's just go into the water with no real weapons. Just, just pedal on a small ass boat. So apparently, shocker, that's not a smart move. And there's an attack where uh, they're like, oh no, Mort went down under the water. Oh no, is Mort okay? We gotta save Mort. Also, who the fuck is Mort? I have no idea who this person is. I have no idea uh, who's Mort. I don't know, but apparently he's down here. We gotta save Mort. Oh, thank God Mort is alive. Also, who the fuck are you? Because I really have no idea what the hell's going on. Who are you, Mort? Are you important to the plot? You know what? It doesn't matter. It's just fucking Oct Octoman. So then there's more hanging out in the darkness outside because that worked so good the last time. Uh, so, uh, because, yeah, because uh, motherfuckers don't learn... So, Octoman shows up, he knocks out Johnny, and he runs off with the requisite woman, but dark, blurry people show up to stop Octoman from taking the requisite woman into the water by shining a flashlight in his face. They shine flashlights in his face, and Octoman freaks out, and they say, hey, it looks like he doesn't like uh, direct light. Looks like light hurts him. Yeah, we can stop him with this light. Hey, didn't he just yeah. kill someone? Like, who the does? In sunlight? Didn't he just kill someone at noon? If we're out in the dark woods 
and you start shining a flashlight at me, I get pissed off. Yeah, they're like, oh, we must hate the, the he must hate the light. He was just yeah. in the fucking sunlight. He was just in the sunlight. Yeah. No, he doesn't hate the light. He hates douchebags. Yeah, it's like you're waiting outside of a movie theater in the middle of the day and someone comes out of the movie theater and they, the sunlight hurts their eyes and they go, oh my God, these people, they must hate the sunlight. This is the kind of thing that the older brother from any kid show does. Okay, this is what this is what the kid did, the older brother did in the Wonder Years. Yeah. This is the kind of shit that the older brother did in in Malcolm in the Middle. Yeah. It's a douchebag move. So they surround Octoman in a ring of fire, and that's a good idea because Octoman hates Johnny Cash. <laughs> yes. And eventually Octoman passes out because, hey, that's just how much Octoman hates Johnny Cash. So they put him in a net, and then it's daytime for about 20 seconds, and then it's fucking night again because everything happens at night. <laughs> and, and Octoman escapes, and it's at this point in the film that it becomes nigh impossible to follow because everything happens at night and you can't see a goddamn fucking thing. So for a while, I would like to talk about the website chatterbait.com. Okay. It's a website where cam girls show up. And if you're a member, then you can, uh, you can tip them coins and uh, the coins are worth money and you can get them to do things. But it's real easy to just be a troll because all of these cams are, for the most part, entirely free. So you can just see a cam girl and they have categories. You can click BBW or Big Ass or Big Tits. I can say this because the kids are out of the room. So if you're watching Octoman and it gets really boring, just chatterbait.com. I'm a big fan. <laughs> BBW section of women and the couples and help the trannies and the men. I'm just like that. I'm just like that. It's just, it's just everything. Goes. It's just everything goes for me. That is once Anywho, again the, the Pope mystery on film reaching out. Pope on film. Yeah, yeah. So the mystery, they everybody gets in the mystery of Winnebago and they try and escape, but there's a tree in the road. Did Octoman do that? Like, there's no fucking way that Octoman made a tree fall on the road, but whatever. So they're trapped, and that's when the stereotype finds a cave. And they're like, oh, no, we shouldn't get in that cave. That'll be certain death. Oh, but wait, we still have 20 minutes left of this film. Yeah, I guess we'll explore the cave because the film needs to be longer. So after a really long ass time in the goddamn cave, they finally find Octoman and they try and shoot it. And is Johnny dead? I'm not sure if Johnny is alive or dead in this scene because he did repeatedly say he wants Octoman alive. And apparently now we're just shooting the shit out of Octoman. Yeah. So somehow they get, somehow they get out i don't know how the film gets really hard to follow and uh this synopsis alone is basically was basically impossible for me to do to to find out this much about the plot of octoman was a fucking a miracle on my on my <laughs> end so they go to the mystery winnebago they get out of the cave that they were trapped in and they go to the mystery winnebago and i'm not exactly sure how that this happens because octoman doesn't have opposable thumbs but Boom! Octoman is hiding in the Winnebago. <laughs> it jumps out. Not sure how that happens because it's pretty much physically impossible. But anywho, <laughs> uh, Octoman knocks out everybody and takes the girl. But then everyone maybe, maybe magically he got, regains. Maybe he got some help from some of his other woodland friends. You know? Yeah, maybe. That's a good. That's a good possibility. Yeah. You know what? Snow. Squirrel Girl. That is a good possibility. Or a swamp thing. Like yeah. a Mexican swamp thing. Yeah, swamp ombre. <laughs> Came and saved it. So everyone is knocked out. Octoman takes the girl. But thankfully, everyone magically regained consciousness from their uh, uh, concussions and goes to save the girl. And they just shoot the shit out of the world's greatest scientific find. And then allow it to stumble back into the water. What the fuck? It'll probably heal in there. It probably gets its strength from the water like the goddamn submariner. Yes. 
Now, the most scariest part of this movie was by far the unexpected Korean horror trailer at the end of this specific edition of the film. Because apparently this film was uploaded from an old VHS tape from Korea. So the scariest part of the film wasn't Octoman jumping out of a Winnebago, but the creepy-ass trailer for um, The Ring Part 9. Yeah. At the end, this film was not expecting that. But anyway, that's the end of the film. And as almost always, the way we like to end this podcast is by talking about the moral. Because we feel here at the Pope on Film that every film has a moral. And I think that the moral of this film is clear. Proper fucking lighting. I don't care if you think you can film outside. Get yourself some goddamn lights. I don't care if it's Phoenix, Arizona on a hot 115 degree August day. Get yourself some goddamn lights, people. Yes. And it doesn't make a difference. Goddamn. It doesn't make a difference how cool your monster Vogue is if you're in a stupid rubber suit. Yeah. I Again, with the proper lighting, I think everyone had learned their lesson from Hal Pete Warren. But apparently they didn't. So now I have to say, Harry Essex. <laughs> Remember Harry Essex. When yes. you're making your film, boys and girls, and boys and girls, proper fucking lighting. If you're going to make a movie, you have to be able to see what's happening. Get some freaking lights. Anyway, the end. That has been the Pope on film. That has been freaking Octoman. It's a horrible movie, but I'd rather watch this film well, than just, watch the goddamn news right now. Just, just, just. One quick thing before we wind up ending the show, uh, which may be a regular thing. I don't know. But at least this week, the Roku movie of the week. Ooh, OK. Um, so we have our own private Roku channel. And the movie yes. of the week is a strange little 1970s uh, made for TV movie called All the Kind Strangers. Wait, this, what was that title? You, you cut off it there. All the Kind Strangers. Okay. It has got to be the best B-level cast of a movie. I mean, I mean, you know, you got the people that are like almost breaking into the A's, you know, like Meow Meow Beans, you know? Yeah. It stars Stacy Keach. Oh god, okay, already right. this is pretty good. Samantha Agar. Ooh. John Savage. And here's the kicker. Robbie Benson. Nice. Got to love Robbie Benson in a made for TV movie. God, he was he lives and dies for made for TV movies, that man. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's pretty that's pretty gold. <laughs> so I recommend it. It's a it's a weird movie somewhere between um Spider Baby and Children of the Corn. Oh god, that's that's a weird and Robbie no, Benson. That makes sense. But I think it's a drama. <laughs> and Robbie Benson <laughs> does a song. Not actually he doesn't actually sing in the movie. But it's him singing the background song. Robbie Benson, yes, yes. Robbie Benson sings the theme song for this movie. Nice. In the style okay. of John Denver. And if you don't have oh, a God. Roku, you don't if you don't have a Roku, all the movies right now are streaming directly from archive.org. No, no, no. They have to watch it on the Roku. Okay. Yeah, I'm saying. Okay. You, they've got to watch it on the Roku. <laughs> got, got that. Okay. I think this has been. I think this has been a damn good episode. And Supernatural starts in seven minutes, so it's fucking perfect timing. This has been a good episode. 
It has. Agreed. So until next week, I am Bunny Williams. And I am Reverend Steve saying thanks for listening and for Jeannie and Bella and Maxwell and a million special guests. I'd just like to thank, say thanks for listening and we'll see you next week, you godless heathens. Cut and print. That's a wrap.